In the neon-drenched corridors of Night City, an urban labyrinth filled with radiant allure and deep-rooted despair, human desperation does more than adapt. It transmutes into anarchic perversity, spawning a parade of macabre gangs, each more wretched than the last. Yet within this cesspool of malevolence, one group stands out as the epitome of terror, the enigmatic maelstrom. Imagine figures swathed in an unholy fusion of leather and chrome, their faces a disturbing mix of shadow and artificial light. Their defining characteristic is the haunting red glow of cybernetic eyes, signifying not just technological enhancement, but a far deeper and more unnerving transformation. They rise above mere lawbreakers to become architects of a techno-dystopia, where humanity's ethical and moral compasses are not just lost, but deliberately dismantled. Brace yourselves as we delve into the depths of Maelstrom's world, a place that challenges the limits of what you perceive as human. Here, Maelstrom represents an intensified form of the lawlessness and cyber obsession that plague Night City, a concentrated manifestation of the city's darkest elements. For those of you tuning in for the first time, welcome to the channel where we dissect and explore the labyrinthine worlds of immersive RPGs with a special focus on Cyberpunk 2077. If delving into the nuanced, treacherous landscapes of such virtual realities is your kind of thrill, do consider subscribing. With that said, let's get back to today's topic, navigating the techno-dystopian labyrinth that is Maelstrom, Night City's most deranged and sadistic techno-fetishists. Let us pull back the curtain on the sordid history that birthed Maelstrom. A tale shrouded in legend, revenge, and technological perversion. In the maze-like recesses of Night City's criminal annals, whispers of the metal warriors reverberate like ghosts. Originating in the tumultuous 2020s, a decade marked by rapid technological advancements and social upheaval, this gang became more myth than corporeal. Their tragic narrative would lay the groundwork for the monstrous entity we now know as Maelstrom. The Metal Warriors once lived by a unique creed that transcended pedestrian concerns of turf wars and resource squabbles. Theirs was a code of honor that deepened their skirmishes into enduring vendettas. Emerging as a prominent booster gang, the Metal Warriors were early adopters of cybernetic technology. Their identity found resonance in the term metal, signifying both their affinity for technology and their unwavering spirit. While we may never know if their cybernetic enhancements pushed them as close to the edge of cyberpsychosis as Maelstrom, their pioneering ethos undeniably paved the way for Maelstrom's own cybernetic excesses. However, the Metal Warrior's path of cybernetic experimentation and honor-bound vendettas would soon encounter an insurmountable obstacle. Enter the Inquisitors, fanatics driven by a perverse religious aversion to cybernetics which they viewed as a corruption of the soul. In a devastating attack, the Inquisitors decimated the Metal Warriors, leaving little more than ashes in their wake. Yet this would not mark the end for the Metal Warriors. They were down, but not out. Fueled by an insatiable desire for vengeance, the surviving Warriors regrouped and formed a dark alliance with other shattered factions. Notably, they joined forces with the Red Chrome Legion, a group of racist, neo-fascist skinheads and the Iron Sights, a faction initially controlled by Arasaka but later abandoned due to its escalating sadism and cyber-psycho tendencies. From these dark alliances emerged Maelstrom, a nefarious chimera that inherited and magnified the darkest proclivities of its predecessors. Initially just a booster gang, Maelstrom clawed its way up the criminal food chain, fueled by relentless ambition and savage cunning. As of 2077, Maelstrom has set up its base in Night City's abandoned All Foods plant, a strategic hideout that overlooks a district rife with secret corporate activities. Led by Royce, who took over from the former leader Brick, the gang has grown to an unsettling size of 1,300 members. A significant portion of these, about a third, are full-blown cyber psychos, with the rest teetering on the edge of mental breakdown due to their cybernetic enhancements. Although they once focused on minor criminal activities, Maelstrom has now expanded its operations. 
The gang now conducts more ambitious and deadly missions, targeting both independent mercenaries, known as Solos, and major corporate entities. As for the Metal Warriors, they may now only be a footnote in history, but their legacy endures in a grotesquely distorted form. What was once a moderate embrace of cybernetics, coupled with a strong ethical compass, has been completely eclipsed by Maelstrom's zealotry and sadistic augmentations. Though it remains a mystery whether Maelstrom ever took its revenge on the Inquisitors, the latter's notable absence from the tableau of modern-day Night City suggests they met a fate as nightmarish, if not more so, than they had inflicted. Ironically, the Inquisitor's purest onslaught against the Metal Warriors led to the birth of a far more terrifying entity, a gang obsessed with cybernetics, teetering on the edge of a technological abyss darker and more abhorrent than anyone could have foreseen. Let us now delve into the complex swirl of ideologies that serves as the gang's spiritual foundation. This is a complex array of beliefs that reject not just societal norms, but also the very essence of human, ethical, and metaphysical existence. For Maelstrom, flesh is merely a canvas waiting for the brush strokes of cybernetic artistry. Their desire for cybernetic augmentation approaches the level of religious fervor, transforming their bodies into grotesque displays of mechanical excess and, indeed, pure body horror. Members often sport missing jaws, warped skin lined with wires, and even entire sections of their skulls replaced with steel chunks. This isn't just a fetish for utility. It's a full-fledged existential creed. Ritualistic modifications, like replacing their faces with horrifying red optics without the use of anesthesia, serve as sacred rites, confirming their exit from the realm of humanity. But don't mistake this gang for mere technophiles. Alongside their cybernetic obsessions, they also delve into the realms of the occult and arcane, as well as pursue otherworldly sensations through extreme brain dances. Their belief system forms a complex tapestry that melds the rigid logic of machinery with the fluid ambiguity of mysticism and the intangible. Rituals designed to breach the black wall to download rogue AIs like Lilith are not outliers, but rather intrinsic facets of their warped ideology. These acts, often carried out with an eerie, almost demonic ambiance, blur the lines between life and death, flesh and machine, real and surreal, into an enigmatic haze. Could this relentless quest for otherworldly experiences through a macabre blend of tech and spirit be their own twisted form of enlightenment? The very thought is enough to send shivers down your spine. Seamlessly woven into this tapestry of philosophical and technological extremities is an organizational structure that, contrary to surface appearances, is anything but anarchic. This isn't a loose affiliation of madmen. It's a meticulously segmented collective. Maelstrom's operation amplifies their ideological extremes into a rigid community structure, elevating their collective sense of belonging to an almost cult-like fervor. Subgroups within the gang each have distinct roles in their criminal empire, be it conducting raids, executing hit jobs, or overseeing territories. By adopting pseudonyms, each member becomes an essential cog in a malevolent machine of unprecedented scale. Morality, as most would understand it, is completely absent from Maelstrom's calculus. Unlike the Metal Warriors, who held on to some semblance of an ethical code, Maelstrom views traditional ethics as a vestigial restraint best shed. Their ferocity isn't confined to confrontations with rival gangs. It seeps into the very essence of human life through chilling experiments carried out on kidnapped victims. Adding a layer of sadistic complexity, they often engage in torture and mutilation, transforming their captives into nightmarish works of living art. Their propensity for extreme violence makes even the most trivial interactions with them a potential bloodbath, signaling their total abandonment of ethical considerations in the single-minded pursuit of their horrific objectives. And let us not overlook their unsettling affinity for cyberpsychosis. While many would recoil from this mental precipice, Maelstrom members lean into it, often teetering over the edge into full-blown clinical insanity. 
This audacious dance with psychological disintegration not only breaks societal boundaries, but also fundamentally challenges what it means to be human. Yet beneath all these layers of ideological perversion, one can't ignore the lingering ghost of revenge, a relic from their metal warrior's ancestry. Although the original vendetta against the Inquisitors may have lost its immediate relevance in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, this eternal thirst for retribution continues to add an undercurrent of unpredictability and danger to their actions. In this ultimate assessment, the patchwork of beliefs that make up Maelstrom's ideology is a dark brew of technological extremism, occult fascinations, organized brutality, ethical nihilism, psychological audacity, and a lingering vindictive fatalism. None of these are mere isolated principles. They are tendrils of a more extensive, interconnected web, making the ideological tapestry even more fearsome than its individual strands would suggest. With this haunting ideological foundation, let's plunge into Maelstrom's sinister underworld economy, where the very definition of crime descends into untold chaos and sadistic pleasure. Each act of horrific violence, grotesque cybernetic experimentation, and wanton theft isn't just about financial gain. It's a celebration of their deranged ethos. Every blood-curdling scream and twisted piece of metal serves to deepen the gang's love for anarchy and mayhem, adding yet another layer to their ever-darkening portrait of nihilistic revelry. Cyberware, the crucible of their existential metamorphosis, emerges as a monolithic cornerstone of their shadowy economic empire. Maelstrom goes far beyond mere trading of off-the-shelf cybernetic implants, choosing instead to pervert these technologies into twisted configurations that bristle with malevolent intent and overwhelming power. These warped cybernetic pieces, an affront to any ethical standard of engineering, inevitably find their way into the underground markets. There, they perform a dual role, both funding Maelstrom's nefarious activities and serving as a physical manifestation of their techno-nihilistic ideology. Far surpassing the banality of simple larceny, Maelstrom's smuggling endeavors are nothing less than masterpieces of cunning orchestration and audacious verve. Nestled dangerously close to Night City's industrial pulsar, their prime location serves as the ideal vantage point for commandeering corporate convoys. Be it pharmaceuticals, armaments, or premium cyberware, they seize it with predatory efficiency, only to re-engineer or fence the spoils through their own labyrinthine black markets. Make no mistake, these acts of larceny are not mere crimes of opportunity, but complex, premeditated machinations, each member contributing to a nihilistic concerto that sings a dissonant anthem of unfettered chaos. Yet for Maelstrom, criminality transcends the tangible and invades the realm of the experiential. They stand as dark pioneers in the clandestine world of brain dance, a frontier where their unholy alchemy of technological manipulation and psychological degradation unfurls in full measure. The sensory narratives they weave are not merely shadowy. They rip through the very fabric of the soul, often spotlighting their own unspeakable acts as vivid, marketable realms of experience. And what is the ultimate aim of these deranged creations? To chase after otherworldly experiences, to delve into the realms of the unutterable, the unconceivable. Among their gallery of nightmarish creations lies a specific lineage of brain dance recordings, aptly named Numbness. These are designed to deliver the obliteration of emotional sensation to the user, serving as a harrowing endorsement of the lure of existential emptiness in a society skirting the precipice. Step through the obsidian doors of Club Totentans, and you're plunged into a vortex that epitomizes Maelstrom's malevolent enterprise. The air is thick with neo-death metal music and the frenetic energy of hedonistic excess. It's not just a dance club, it's a drink and riot venue where the very essence of Maelstrom oozes from its steel-clad walls. By 2077, Totentans had evolved into the most popular gang club in Night City, a haven where gangsters from all walks of life could indulge in drugs, violence, and a complete surrender to the senses. However, this comes with its own terms, obedience to Maelstrom's ironclad authority and security protocols. 
if the body count at the end of the night is less than a dozen. You know you've attended a dull event by Maelstrom standards. But don't be fooled. Totentans is more than just a den of iniquity. It serves multiple dark purposes, filling the gang's coffers and acting as a crucible to vet and refine their future cadre. Only those with the requisite intensity of psychopathy are meticulously sifted out to become part of Maelstrom's accursed fold. In Maelstrom's dark sphere of influence, routine criminal contracts are elevated to a whole new level of depravity. What might be a simple assassination task in the hands of another gang becomes, under Maelstrom's direction, a performance of unutterable horror. Targets are not merely eliminated. They become the unwilling stars of ghastly spectacles. The final moments of these unfortunate souls aren't quick or merciful. Instead, they find themselves dismembered piece by piece, their cybernetic implants cruelly torn out while they're still painfully aware, making each act not just a killing, but a ceremony. This ritualistic approach to violence is punctuated by gratuitous acts of mutilation, serving as a testament to Maelstrom's unique blend of psychopathy and sadistic artistry. But don't mistake this frenzied circus of malevolence as mere anarchic chaos. There's a thread of calculated political cunning woven through it. Their labyrinthine interactions with monolithic corporations like Militech reveal an agenda that extends far beyond the anarchic streets of Night City. Maelstrom has staked a claim in a much grander theater of operations, one that encompasses not merely underworld malevolence, but also corporate skullduggery and political subterfuge. To comprehend Maelstrom is to delve into a realm where criminality and ideology are so intrinsically enmeshed that they become almost indistinguishable. Every facet of their operation, be it the alchemical transformations of cyberware, the orchestrated mayhem of their smuggling rings, the soul-rending depths of their black market brain dance, or the abominable creativity in their contracted acts of violence, is but a darker shade in a chillingly coherent tapestry. Their streams of illicit revenue are not channels feeding mere material avarice, but are rather the arteries nourishing an ever-evolving, nightmarish entity. An existence that spirals ceaselessly into greater complexities of terror and darkness. Navigating deeper into the shadowy intricacies of Maelstrom's underworld, it becomes clear that the volatile figures at the helm are as tempestuous as the malevolent ideologies they champion. The leaders guiding this ship are the living embodiment of a ceaseless swirl of competing agendas, merciless power grabs, and a kaleidoscope of evolving philosophies. Stability is a foreign concept here. The constant turbulence of internal strife is the true face of the gang's chaotic core. Much like the fluidity of their ever-changing cybernetic augmentations, the leadership of Maelstrom is modular and easily replaceable, merely cogs in a machine fueled by disorder. Rising from this chaos is Royce, a tumultuous leader who clawed his way to the top by violently overthrowing Brick, the former chief. Far more than a mere figurehead, he embodies the unpredictable essence of Maelstrom's cybernetic horror. Guiding his gang through a cocktail of fear and a twisted sense of idealism, Royce thrives in chaos and unpredictability. Each act of violence, each piece of cyberware added to the gang's collective body, serves as a stanza in his discordant ode to anarchy and moral nihilism. Aided by Dum Dum, his reign marks a dark chapter in Maelstrom's chaotic saga. Dum Dum serves as an excellent complement to Royce, offering a layer of social adeptness that balances Royce's violent impulsiveness. His role highlights that Maelstrom is not simply a chaotic assembly of reckless psychopaths, but a complex tapestry of deeply flawed individuals. Each member has their own unique role in the twisted ecosystem of gang life, and Dum Dum stands out as the one who can navigate social interactions more skillfully than his more volatile counterparts. Lingering on the periphery is Brick, the former leader who was violently deposed and imprisoned, ostensibly left for dead by Royce, his usurper. A spectral reminder that power within Maelstrom is as transient as the gang's own fickle allegiances. Brick's incarceration also serves as a testament to the merciless brutality within the group. When given the opportunity, however, 
Brick can claw his way back into the fray, highlighting that no one in Maelstrom is ever truly out of the game. Each of these figures, Royce, Dum Dum, and Brick, adds a unique shade of insanity to the unsettling tapestry of Maelstrom. Collectively, they shape a culture that is both horrifying and compelling, a tribe bound not just by technological extremism, but also by a shared ethos of collective brutality and moral nihilism. As the year 2077 unfolds, Maelstrom's influence continues to rise, propelled by daring raids on high-tech corporate convoys. One prized object of their desire is the Militech MT-0D-12 Flathead, a marvel in espionage technology that entangles V, Jackie Wells, and Dexter Deshawn, the enigmatic fixer, in a web of precarious choices. Meredith Stout, a Militech agent, enters this volatile situation, adding another layer of complexity and unpredictability to the ongoing negotiations. Her cred chip, secretly laced with malware, acts as a silent wildcard with the potential to shake up the already unstable power dynamics within the gang. As Maelstrom continues to evolve, its story is not just of a gang, but also a mirror reflecting the larger world around it. This world is steeped in the same volatile blend of anarchy, nihilism, and technological obsession. Their story is a cyclic vortex of uprisings and falls, a phoenix-like tale of destruction and rebirth that hews closely to their anarchic core beliefs. Who will sit on the throne next is as unpredictable as the gang itself, a constant dance of power and deception. The moral ambiguity of Maelstrom's existence is a conundrum that intertwines with larger philosophical questions about human evolution, the breakdown of societal structures, and the overwhelming presence of corporate interests. The further they drift into the abyss of cybernetic transformation, the more they reveal their deeply human motivations, power, survival, and rebellion. Their story raises disconcerting questions about humanity's trajectory, as the gang themselves become more machine-like while displaying some of humanity's most troubling traits. As we draw the curtain on our intricate exploration of Maelstrom, let's revisit our original premise. Examining Night City's most sadistic and deranged techno-fetishists. Maelstrom is far from an aberration. Rather, it is a concentrated expression of Night City's own ideological and existential malaise. Their frenzied worship of machines and cybernetics transcends mere fetishism. It represents a radical, almost cult-like devotion that amplifies the chaos, sadism, and techno-extremism already festering in the underbelly of Night City. Royce, Dum Dum, and Brick are not mere cogs in this twisted mechanism, but reflective shards of a city balanced precariously on the knife edge of its own creation and destruction. Their violent tendencies and sadistic pleasure in causing pain magnifies the ethical quagmires and existential dilemmas intrinsic to Night City. It's a city of paradoxes, a monument to human ingenuity, yet also a labyrinthine den of inequality and exploitation. A place where the extraordinary is mundane, yet where basic humanity is often a luxury few can afford. As for Maelstrom as a gang, their story amplifies these contradictions. This is not a band of run-of-the-mill criminals, but an assemblage of techno-anarchists operating on the fringes of legality and sanity. They exhibit a profound, yet profoundly twisted form of creativity in how they modify their bodies and manipulate technology. This captures the essence of a dystopia veering towards chaos, its gears lubricated by unbridled capitalist ambitions and moral apathy. Maelstrom, with its chaotic hierarchy and sadistic rituals, serves as a microcosm of Night City's own derangement and instability. So, as we conclude, let Maelstrom's tale serve not only as a cautionary narrative, but also as a disturbing prophecy, highlighting the gathering storm of moral and existential crises set to envelop Night City. These looming tempests are ironically born from the city's own paradoxical blend of cutting-edge innovation and ethical desolation. All right, folks. A massive thank you for joining me in today's episode where we delved deep into the lore of Maelstrom. 
I hope the journey was as thrilling for you as it was for me in crafting it. If you found what we explored today engaging, it would be an honor to have you subscribe. Your enthusiasm means the world, especially as we explore more of the rich and complex world of Cyberpunk 2077. With the release of Phantom Liberty, which has been incredibly well executed, my passion for this game has only deepened. In the pipeline, we've got an array of cyberpunk-focused content spanning a broad spectrum. From the twisted labyrinths that make up the gangs of Night City, to the cogs and wheels of governmental systems, law enforcement agencies, and faceless megacorporations, we'll be dissecting it all. On top of that, keep an eye out for in-depth guides and build videos that are in the works. If this immersive, multifaceted journey sounds like your cup of tea, do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Once more, thank you for giving me your time and attention. Until next time, farewell for now.